Hi, in this video I want to talk about the identity element. So let's start with the definition. If we have a structure S with the binary operation star, then S has an identity element which we'll call E. If E star X equals X star E, which equals X for all X in S. So let's look at some examples. The first example we'll look at is the set of integers with the addition operation. And we want to know if this has an identity element. So we want to know if there is an integer such that whenever you add another integer to it, you get the integer you added back. And the answer is yes, there is. The zero is the identity element for this one. So if we have any integer x, x plus zero equals zero plus x, which of course just equals x. And this is for all x in the set of integers. So zero is our identity element. Let's look at another example. We'll try the set of real numbers along with multiplication. For this one, we have the element one because one times x equals x times one, which equals x for all x in the set of real numbers. So one is our identity element. Now let's try one using matrices. So I'm going to write this and if you've never seen this, this just means the set of all two by two matrices with real numbers as entries. So any matrices that's formatted like this, where A, B, C, and D are all real numbers, that would be in this set. And we wanna know if this structure has an identity element. So we want to be able to add another two by two matrices to this and somehow still end up with the original one that we put in. So this here. So of course the zero matrix will do this. If we have all zeros for entries and we add these, it just gives us exactly what we put in. So our zero matrix would be the identity element for this one. Now what about if we have this same set but this time we do multiplication? So we need A, B, C, D. We need this to be multiplied by some matrix and have it output still A, B, C, D. And for this one, you just have to remember how matrix multiplication works. So if we were to just put in here some arbitrary values for the meanwhile, and then try to find out what these values would be, if we multiplied this out, we would get this matrix here, and we need this to equal A, B, C, and D. So that tells us that E needs to equal 1, G needs to equal 0, F needs to equal 0, and H needs to equal 1. So our identity matrix in this case would look like this. Now that we've gone through some examples, I want to abstract it a little bit and go over some properties pertaining to the identity element. There are two important properties to notice. First is that the identity element is unique, meaning a structure may have at most one identity element. The second property is that having an identity element is a structural property, meaning if two structures are isomorphic and one has an identity element, the other must as well. Let's go ahead and prove these two properties. We'll start with number one. So let's prove the identity element must be unique. In order to do that, let's try to assume it doesn't need to be unique. So suppose our structure has two identity elements, E and E prime. Then of course, for all X in S, we have x star e equals e star x, which equals x, and we also have x star e prime equals e prime star x, which equals x. But now what happens when we take e star e prime? Looking at the identity e, this tells us that this equals e prime, but focusing on the identity e prime, this tells us that this equals e. So we can conclude that e is actually equal to e prime, so they are the same and we have shown that a structure can have no more than one identity element. Now let's prove the second property, the one that says that having an identity element is a structural property. So suppose we have two isomorphic structures S and S prime with the isomorphism phi between them, and we will assume that S has an identity element E. Then we want to show that S prime must also have an identity element. So from the definition of an identity element we know that for all x in S, E star x equals x star E, which equals x. Then we can use our map phi to see what these elements of S get mapped to in S prime. Doing this, we get that phi of E star x 
equals phi of x star e, which equals phi of x, and that's because phi is a function. And now if we use the homomorphism property, we can change this to say that phi of e star prime phi of x equals phi of x star prime phi of e, which equals phi of x. And at this point, remember that phi is onto. So for any x prime in s prime, we can find an x in s such that phi of x equals x prime. So this statement is true for all phi of x in s prime. And with that, we can now see that phi of e is our identity element. So we have not only shown that s prime must have an identity element, but we have also shown that any isomorphism must map the identity element of one structure to the identity element of the other structure. And that's a very useful idea. So I hope this video has helped you with the concept of an identity element. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.